I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We're now going to have an invocation by Reverend Bob McFarland, who is portraying Joshua Chamberlain. I'm delighted to have been invited to be with you once again, and I bring greetings from my men of my 20th Maine Regiment of Volunteers who fought so valiantly on Little Round Top on that second day of July, 1863, in Gettysburg. Please join me as we invoke the blessing of the Almighty. Holy and gracious Heavenly Father, we gather in this hallowed place of rural cemetery in New Bedford, that we might hold dear the sacred memory of those who gave their last full measure of devotion, that we might live in freedom. So bless these honored dead on this day of memorial, that the words of President Lincoln may always ring true, that these honored dead may not have died in vain, but that their sacrifice on either side of the stone wall may lift this nation to become the very best it can be. So may these men and women we memorialize today from all walks of life, from every station and of every color, from every political and spiritual persuasion, may each one now rest from their labors and their struggles and find their rest in you, O God, their rock and their redeemer. Amen. Thank you. We'll now have Bob Lytle read General John A. Logan's order number 11. General John Logan was Commander-in-Chief of the Grand Army of the Republic in 1868. He was the commander of the Union Veterans, and Order Number 11 establishes what then was called Decoration Day, and I'll read it. It's a bit dated in language, but uh, it's a wonderful piece of prose. Washington, D.C., May 5, 1868, Headquarters, Grand Army of the Republic. The 30th day of May, 1868, is designated for the purpose of strewing with flowers, or otherwise decorating, the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country during the late rebellion, and whose bodies now lie in almost every city, village, and hamlet churchyard in the land. In this observance, no form or ceremony is prescribed, but post and command comrades will in their own way arrange such fitting services and testimonials of respect as circumstances may permit. We are organized comrades, as our regulations tell us, for the purpose, among other things, of preserving and strengthening those kind and fraternal feelings which have bound together the soldiers, sailors, and marines who united to suppress the late rebellion. What can aid more to assure this result than by cherishing tenderly the memory of our heroic dead who made their breasts a barricade between our country and its foe? Their soldier lives were the reveille of freedom to a race in chains, and their death a tattoo of rebellious tyranny in arms. We should guard their graves with sacred vigilance. All that the consecrated wealth and taste of the nation can add to their adornment and security is but a fitting tribute to the memory of her slain defenders. Let no wanton foot tread rudely on such hallowed grounds. Let pleasant paths invite the coming and going of reverent visitor and fond mourners. Let no vandalism of avarice or neglect, no ravages of time, 
testify to the present or to the coming generations that we have forgotten as a people the cost of a free and undivided republic. If other eyes grow dull and other hands slack and other hearts cold in the solemn trust, ours shall keep it well as long as the light and warmth of life remains in us. Let us then, <clears throat> at the time appointed, gather around their sacred remains and garland thy passionless mounds above them with the choicest flowers of springtime. Let us raise above them the dear old flag they saved from dishonor. Let us, in this solemn presence, renew our pledges to aid and assist those whom they have left among us as sacred charges upon the nation's gratitude, the soldiers and sailors, widow and orphan. It is the purpose of the Commander-in-Chief to inaugurate this observance with the hope it will be kept up from year to year, while a survivor of the war remains to honor the memory of his departed comrades. He earnestly desires the public press to call attention to this order and lend its friendly aid in bringing it to the notice of comrades in all parts of the country in, times, in time for simultaneous compliance therewith. Department commanders will use every effort to make this order effective by command of John A. Logan, Commander-in-Chief. I'm now going to read a poem that was written by Henry Jerome Stockard during the Civil War. It's titled, Over Their Graves. Over their graves rang once the bugle's call, the searching shrapnel and the crashing ball, the shriek, the shock of battle, and the neigh of horse, the cries of anguish and dismay, and the loud cannon's thunder that appall. Now through the years the brown pine needles fall, the vines run riot over the old stone wall, by hedge, by meadow streamlet, far away, over their graves. We love our dead, where e'er so held enthralled. Then they, no Greek, more bravely died, nor Gaul. A love that's deathless, but they look today with no reproach on us as we say, come, let us grasp our hands, we're brothers all over their graves. We will now have the uh, reading of those New Bethard men that died in battle by Mark Mello, who is depicting a second lieutenant during the Civil War. Second Lieutenant Charles Cavanaugh of the 23rd Massachusetts Regiment. Killed at the Battle of First Bull Run in July of 1861 was William Manchester of the 18th Regiment. Killed at the Battle of Antietam in September of 1862 were John Hogan of the 28th Massachusetts Regiment and Henry Williams of the 18th Massachusetts Regiment. In December of 1862, Andrew Cole and Luthane Blake of the 18th Massachusetts Regiment were killed at the Battle of Fredericksburg. At the Battle of Chancellorsville in May of 1863, Owen O'Malley was killed in action. During the Siege of Vicksburg, Albert Aldrich of the 30th Massachusetts Regiment of Heavy Artillery was killed. Killed at the Battle of Gettysburg were John Canty of the 5th Massachusetts Light Artillery, John Hathaway of the 3rd Massachusetts Light Artillery, Sergeant James Levin of the 18th Massachusetts, and George Lucas of the 30th Massachusetts Regiment. Killed at the Battle of New Bern were David Lawton of the 2nd Massachusetts Heavy Artillery and Charles Crane and Ezra Chase of the 3rd Massachusetts Regiments. The brother of Ezra Chase, William Chase, of the 2nd Massachusetts Heavy Artillery was killed at the Battle of Fort Wagner. At Port Hudson in July of 1863, Charles Booth, Henry Heinz, and Jonathan Nye all of the 3rd Massachusetts Cavalry Regiment were killed. Also, Lieutenant Colonel 
William Logan Rodman of the 38th Massachusetts Regiment was killed in action. At the Battle of the Wilderness in May of 1864, Charles Mar Marcy of the 11th Massachusetts Regiment was killed. James Gooden of the 54th Massachusetts Regiment and James Spooner of the 18th Massachusetts Regiment both died as prisoners of war at Andersonville Prison in Georgia. First Lieutenant Peleg Blake of the 5th Massachusetts Light Artillery and Henry Fitzsimmons of the 58th Massachusetts Regiment were both killed during the siege of Petersburg. Our keynote address is typically given by the mayor of New Bedford. Unfortunately, he is unable to be with us today. So I will say a few words to sort of commemorate why we're here today. And we are here to memorialize those men for New Bedford who served this country during the time of its greatest crisis. A crisis that would have split this nation in two and ultimately would have weakened both countries. These men joined the Army and the Navy for a variety of reasons. Some responded to the call of Lincoln to keep the Union as one. Some were angered over the attack by South Carolinians on the federal installation at Fort Sumter. Some were abolitionists who opposed slavery and who not only did not want it to spread to the West, but wanted to see it ended in the South. And there were some that fought for glory and adventure in what really is a the nightmare of war. But the cause of the Union was the right one, and for that, all of these men deserve the honor and the respect that we are providing them today. They fought for oneness, they fought for inclusion, not for separation and exclusion. But let's not forget that despite the distance in time and technology, these men were no different than we are now. They were concerned about their jobs, the economy of the country, who they would vote for for president. They did not love their wives less than we love ours. They were not less concerned about the welfare of their children than we are. They were not less heartbroken when we lose a loved one. And they were not less joyful when we find life sweet and fun. Now today we see both men and women returning from war-torn areas, most often whole, but sometimes they return injured both physically as well as psychologically. The soldiers of the Civil War experienced similar physical as well as psychological sufferings that stayed with them until they passed into the hereafter. And so, in a moment, I'm going to ask for a period of silence for the men who lie here and the men who lie in almost every cemetery in New Bedford, as well as most of the military cemeteries throughout the eastern part of the country that were established after the Civil War. They gave themselves to a nation as one. Please feel the compassion for them and their families that we experience when we view our present day soldiers, our men and our women who are wounded, and the dead who return to this country. And now let's have a moment of silence for them. We're now going to have uh, Larry Bedell, who is portraying Abraham Lincoln, and he's going to read the Gettysburg Address. <clears throat> Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought upon this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so get dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to de dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. 
But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men living and dead who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note or long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living rather, to be dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from the earth. We'll now have a musical selection by Miss Teen, Massachusetts, 2016, of Battle Hymn of the Republic. have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He has trampled out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He hath loosed his faithful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. I have seen him in the watchfires of a hundred circling camps. He has seen him in the watchfires of a hundred circling camps. I can read his righteous sentence in the dim and daring lamps. His day is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. We're now going to have the laying of the flowers by the two ladies of the big 19th century ladies, um, Abby and Ruth. So if you would do that.
Larry Roy is going to give us uh, two harmonica selection, Dixie and Rally Round the Flag. Miss Teen Massachusetts is going to lead us in singing God Bless America. You all have it, and I encourage all of us to sing. Music is good for the mind, it's good for the heart, and it's certainly good for the soul. It's a wonderful thing to do this weekend. So.
Joshua Chamberlain is now going to do the benediction for yes. us. Let us all stand, please. Having heard words of inspiration for the living of our lives and words of challenge to take up the cause for which these men and women so nobly served, let us offer a final prayer. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord, and I have seen him in the watchfires of a hundred circling camps. He has sounded forth the trumpet that shall never call retreat, for his truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. And now may the Lord bless and keep each of these that we honor this day. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you for having fought the good fight. And may the Lord watch over you and over each one present this morning, both now and forevermore. Amen. We are at the close of our ceremony, but there are many, many people to thank. First, the cemetery department for, you know, presenting this uh, site to us and providing uh, the podium and the sound system as well as the flag. But I also have to thank uh, Miss Team Massachusetts, Alyssa Matoza. Um, very appreciative that you were able to be with us today. Uh, Judy Rodericks and Lucy Bly, who depict Abby and uh, Ruth at the National Park. Very happy that you joined us. Add a great deal to our service. Uh, Bob Brownlee, who uh, sounded taps. Uh, members of the Second Rhode Island who fired the salute. And finally, I need to thank members of the roundtable who contribute so much to this specific uh, service today. Uh, Bob McFarlane, Bob Lytle, Larry Bedell, Larry Roy, and Mark Mello. Now, while our service here is complete, uh, we are going to be conducting another smaller service at uh, St. Mary Cemetery on Route 6 across from Shaw's uh, in honor of the uh, Medal of Honor recipient, uh, William Downey. And that will, as I said, begin at 11 o'clock. Again, thank you all of you who have shown up. Uh, I hope all of you have a, a, a very good Memorial Day weekend and uh, a safe and enjoyable summer. Thank you. Thank you.